a matter of life and death. There is a crisis in South Florida. People are dying because of it. I'm Marilyn Mitzel. The problem is we have only one trauma care center. It's here at Jackson Memorial Hospital. If you're ever critically injured, pray that you are brought here. They're best at treating trauma injury. But Jackson is overwhelmed and the problem is getting worse. Trauma means you're so badly hurt, you'll die if you don't get help fast. If you're rescued and stabilized within 60 minutes, your chance of living greatly improves. Doctors call it the golden hour. p.m. the call goes out to Dade County's air rescue. We had a heart rate back. I hope we get there in time and I hope I really do hope that we're able to save that person. We can be just about anywhere in Dade County from the time we're called to touchdown in, in about 12 minutes. The race is on to save the life of a man on the verge of death from drowning. Stand clear. 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 His name is Juan. He's 35 years old and was underwater for at least 15 minutes. He was swimming with his kids. He is minutes, maybe seconds away from death. We may be hanging on the far end side of the golden hour, and we have to make vital use of every single minute that's uh, left in that golden hour in order to take care of that patient. We're all working again with one goal, and that's to save these people that need it so badly. And you'll know if it's a patient that you have minutes with or it's a patient that you have maybe a half an hour of, you take the patient, you do with that patient everything that you have to do. But not even the golden hour could save Juan. His fight for life is lost. But the trauma team must carry on. There's no time for grief. Another patient is on the way. A 17-year-old named Marshall. He was shot in the stomach. There, there's no rest here. You get an occasional good night, but Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night might not be much different from, you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Three. Uh, Excuse me, touch the diaphragm. Uh, Trauma victims get priority at Jackson. The strain on the entire hospital is immense. You have trauma patients coming in every hour to every half hour. You have no place to put them. You have uh, patients literally lining the hallways. You were beaten. Somebody hit you. The busiest times are known as clinical gridlock. You start having to broker beds and move patients here to get this patient there. And you have to cancel elective surgery and the whole system clogs and backs up. Please call the trauma room at 6887-6887. He's got no allergies, no nothing. We have two trauma rooms. Uh, 
the big rooms, we at times can handle five, six patients in those two rooms when we have to. Sometimes we'll turn the entire um, suture room into intensive care unit. We'll have seven, eight patients on ventilators down there. We keep up on the latest technology, but if it, we just can't get it to you, uh, it's not going to do anyone any good. The pressure was 112. Stable. Marshall is lucky. There is room to treat him and he'll live. Of the 4,000 patients treated here every year, 3,400 will live. For people in Dade County, there's no other place to go. One perception that's out there is that, oh, we only go to the trauma center if you get shot or you get stabbed. It doesn't matter if you are a millionaire in this community with tons of insurance, when they call up and say, Motor vehicle accident, patient ejected, blood pressure 60, you have to come here. There is nowhere else to go. You're to explode. It's a fresh new start, and it all begins with a phone call. 324-0000. So listen, opportunities knocking. Dade County Public Schools. Climb aboard. The future's now. Learn the skills to get the jobs. Go for the O. Opportunity. Call now. 324-0000. Go for the O. A man named John is shot in the chest by his landlord. Ernest is hit by a car. Two sisters, Yvonne and Jillian, are shot by their stepfather. Within minutes, they all arrive at Jackson's Trauma Center on a Monday evening. Okay, let's go. He had no vital signs whatsoever, no heartbeat, no pulse, no respirations. And at the last ditch effort, we opened his chest. We give everybody a chance, a benefit of the doubt. We try and bring them back uh, from the dead, so to speak. In this case, it didn't work. I'm going to open you up down the middle, open your belly and fix, fix the, uh, the bowel, it looks like it's hanging out here, okay? You have a lot of pellets inside your abdomen, they have to be taken out. Well, it's not going to hurt, they're going to put you in the Yvonne, 20, is shot in the stomach. Jillian, 16, in the elbow. Both are riddled with pellets from shotgun blasts. They need surgery, but will live. Ernest, the victim of a hit-and-run driver, also goes to surgery for a fractured skull and leg. He, too, lives. We like to sometimes call it organized chaos because while it looks like there's literally chaos and no one knows what they're doing, it's really very well-timed, organized. But this special treatment is very expensive, running into thousands of dollars within minutes. Money is a big reason Broward County doesn't have a trauma center. But how much is a life worth? The phone and you're yelling. July 29th, Pompano Beach police officer Scott Winters is shot in the line of duty. All units, an officer has been shot. 7.26 p.m., he radios for help. An hour later, he's pronounced dead at North Broward Medical Center. Shot in a vital artery, he bled to death. While Scott may never have had a chance, some say he and others like him would still be alive if Broward had a trauma center.
that's the problem here in Broward County. There are no doctors specifically trained to treat trauma injuries standing by. There are no fully equipped trauma rooms ready to go. Last year, nearly 700 trauma patients died in Broward County. Trauma experts say nearly half died needlessly. We have been watching people die for years. I would take a member of my family to a local hospital and hope and pray that the roll of the dice fell in their favor. Henry, come stay right with me. One block from the Broward County line, an eight-year-old boy is hit by a car. He has no pulse. Child hit by an automobile. Uh, fracture to left bank is in traumatic arrest at this time. And uh, contusion to head and chest area. QSL rescued. Uh, do you know what at what time did the accident happen? That's negative, Jamie. You'll have to contact ground rescue. Metro rescue to arrival, JMH. Air rescue to arrival. Bay County. His name is Dennis, and although he's closer to hospitals in Broward because it has no trauma center, he goes to Jackson Memorial. The trauma team gets ready to give him a fighting chance. Again, the race is on to beat the clock and save another life. Win Dixie. Well, now that Win Dixie has lower prices, I can do more with the savings that I have. Check out this great price on lean and meaty pork spare ribs, just $1.37 a pound. Your Coke favorites are 77 cents a two-liter bottle, limit two. Harvest fresh sweet potatoes are 26 cents a pound. And get up to $10 off selected seats in the Win Dixie Family Zone at Miami Dolphins Games. Shop Win Dixie, America's supermarket. It takes a special kind of person to handle a 911 call. Every day the job is different. Seconds count when you've got someone's life in your hands. If this career is one you can handle, contact Medical Arts Training Center now. 1-800-940-ARTS. Day and evening classes make attendance easy. For information on how you can become a medical assistant, phlebotomist, or 911 paramedic, call Medical Arts Training Center now. 1-800-940-ARTS. Yes. Yes. Ground units bring yet another child hit by a car. How you feel? Yeah. Bad. What's wrong besides being scared? Huh? Don't move your head, okay? He's gonna take that tape off. His name is Daryl. He's seven years old. Just fine. And he was riding a bike with his brother. Put them down. Do your fingers. Can you tell me where you are? No. No? Do you remember what happened to you? How long ago? It's yeah. been since uh, you picked him up. Uh, six minutes to get here. Six minutes? Yeah. Uh, I have to fix the holes. Oh, we did hands on. And it's a kid. You know, there's a sense of innocence. You wonder why so many kids get hit by cars. It's incredible how many kids get hit by cars that I've seen a week. Hang on, that's it. It's over. It's over. That's the last stick you'll have. Okay, no more needles. You don't want a needle? If there's one thing that we're, that the trauma service is accused of, it's being honest. Yeah. We're only afforded a short period of time with the family. Darwin, I think it's going to be all right, okay? Uh, he's scared, which is normal. Um, but the initial tests that we did, the x-ray and the, and the x-ray of the chest and his pelvis were normal. I'm just worried about the x-rays, that's all. Daryl's leg is fractured. His brother, Hassan, is more frightened than hurt. Both will go home. It's the children that hit trauma teams the hardest. 
The worst thing I've ever experienced is having to tell a parent that their child is dead. I mean, that's horrible. And we'll cry with the best of them. Tonight, you witnessed uh, an eight-year-old child, a pedestrian hit that basically had no pulses and wasn't breathing on his own. And when he got to the hospital, he had some pulses. And I wish him luck. But we did make it, uh, an effort there. I think we won. Trauma stories often end in sorrow. Dennis didn't make it. He died of massive internal injuries. This could happen to anyone. I mean, we never... Who expected that morning? We expected Julie to come home and have lunch with us, and she didn't. 16-year-old Julie Aguilus had the green light when a truck towing a tractor broadsided her. The tractor ended up on top of her. Julie was all bleeding. The head, the eyes, mouth, everything all over. But everybody doing something in that moment. When I walk in. When uh, my wife got there, I pulled her away from everybody, and I started crying with her, and I, I just kept telling her, I don't want to have any kids. I can't stand this pain. And if I, I thought if I had to go through what they went through, I, I wouldn't be able to take it, I, you know. That was three years ago, and the thought of it still brings tears to her family's eyes. Know exactly how it, what it was. It like. still brings tears to Julie's eyes as well. You know, I felt just happy to be alive. I didn't care how I was. You know, not that I didn't care, but it's like, gosh, I almost lost these people who loved me at first. For the trauma team, the best of times are often born of tragedy. Hi, Hi how are you? Fine, you look great. How was the trip to New York? Just having somebody come back and say, hey, I know if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be alive today. Um, we treasure those moments. I can't believe that I was there. I, I can't, it's, it's hard to believe, you know, what, when, I don't remember anything. It was scary. When I walked in there, it was like, I felt chills and, strange to know that I was there. It's like I was in here. They were treating me for something really serious. Except for a few scars you'd never know, Julie suffered major head trauma, fractured her ribs, collarbone, pelvis, and nearly lost her leg. Or that her lungs collapsed just before surgery to stop internal bleeding. Like people probably see me now and they probably would never believe that this has happened to me, but it took a lot of hard work to get here. Yeah, now like a regular sister. This is what I usually do to her right here. It was a miracle. Tell us it's a miracle. It's the only miracle I've ever seen. Her forehead or something. She got big nails. Look, see how big the nails are? I, I feel joy. I feel thankful, grateful that they were there for me. Listen to what's happening at Winn-Dixie. I would spend between 80 and 90 dollars a week at Winn-Dixie and since the price rolled back, it's, it's between 50 and 60. I'm a comparative shopper at Winn-Dixie and uh, from one week to the next, I can see the prices are going down. I have been spending between 50 and 60 dollars a week uh, at Winn-Dixie where now the same groceries are costing me like 40 dollars. Winn-Dixie, America's supermarket. There's a new generation of education about to explode. It's a fresh new start, and it all begins with a phone call. 324 0000. So listen, opportunities knocking. Dade County Public Schools. Climb aboard. The future's now. Learn the skills to get the jobs. Go for the O. Opportunity. Call now. 324 Go for the O. 
your carpet takes a lot of abuse. Call Stanley Steamer now for our new one-year clean guarantee. We'll clean and protect your carpet so well, if it gets dirty after we clean it, we'll clean it again, as many times as you like, at no extra charge. Compromise would set new restrictions for itemized deductions. When we say we clean it, we mean it. Call Stanley Steamer now for our current specials. It takes a special kind of person to handle a 911 call. Every day the job is different. Seconds count when you've got someone's life in your hands. If this career is one you can handle, contact Medical Arts Training Center now. 1-800-940-ARTS. Day and evening classes make attendance easy. For information on how you can become a medical assistant, phlebotomist, or 911 paramedic, call Medical Arts Training Center now. 1-800-940-ARTS. every day in South Florida, claiming the littlest lives like Dennis. Or Juan, who went swimming with his kids one afternoon and drowned. And Officer Scott Winters, shot and killed in the line of duty. But trauma doesn't always end tragically. Lives are saved every day. Like Julie, who hopes to be a model. Yvonne and her sister Jillian have a whole new life to look forward to. To give all of us the best chance of surviving critical injuries, we need better trauma care. The legislature gave Broward County two of the nearly $9 million needed to start a trauma network. The rest will most likely come from taxes. In Dade County, Jackson Memorial is raising money to build a new trauma center. We know we're not going to save everybody. We know we can't save everybody. But we'll be darned, we're going to give it our best shot. else that saves lives is organ donation. The shame is that vast numbers of human organs go to waste because so few of us are organ donors. We want to save lives. Um, we do it for a living. We're good at it. Um, and we care about our patients. And we want everybody to live. We want to beat that nasty demon death. People live, people die. Uh, while death is tough, we are here to save lives, and we're going to continue to save lives. And we have to go on for the next person that comes in. We have to be ready for when that next person comes in.
want some reasons to vote for Mary Collins on October 2nd? She opposes continuing tax increases. Her trauma center at the Jackson Memorial Hospital and it is overwhelmed with patients. Tonight our health specialist Marilyn Mitchell is here with a progress report on how they're doing on building a new one. Marilyn. Progress is coming along slowly but surely. The new trauma center should be completed by June 1992. Construction began in November. This being Trauma Awareness Week we felt it's a good time to remind you that trauma care is everyone's business. Here's why. What happened to Julie Egalos could happen to any one of us. This could happen to anyone. I mean, we never, who expected that morning, we expected Julie to come home and have lunch with us, and she didn't. One sunny morning, the teenager was hit by a truck driver who ran a red light. She was rushed to Jackson Memorial Hospital's trauma center. No one knew if she'd live or die. The trauma team did its best. And Julie was all bleeding. The head the eyes, mouth, everything all over. That was three years ago. The thought of it still brings tears to Julie's eyes. I'm just happy to be alive. I didn't care how I was. You know, not that I didn't care, but it's like, gosh, I almost lost these people who love me. I've hurt them. Hi, Hi. Hi. how are you? Fine, you look great. Thanks. How was the trip to New York? Since the accident, Julie has on several occasions visited the trauma team that saved her life. Just having somebody come back and say, hey, I know if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be alive today. Um, we treasure those moments. I can't believe that I was there. I, I can't. It's, it's hard to believe, you know, when, when, I don't remember anything. It was scary. When I walked in there, it was like, I felt chills and strange to know that I was there. It's like I was in here. They were treating me for something really serious. Except for a few scars, you'd never know Julie survived a major head injury, fractured ribs, collarbone, pelvis, and nearly lost her leg, or that her lungs collapsed just before surgery to stop internal bleeding. Today, Julie is in college studying interior design and is a model. She spends time educating the public about the desperate need for a new trauma care center. People probably see me now and they probably would never believe that this has happened to me, but it took a lot of hard work to get here, you know, and I had the support of my family. She got big nails, look, see how big the nails are? I, I feel joy, I feel thankful, grateful that they were there for me. And hopefully they'll be there for you if you need them, but as always it takes money and that's why we want to remind you about Bricks for Trauma. Buy a brick for $35, your name or loved ones will be put on the brick and it will be placed outside the trauma center. The money will help build the new trauma center. The number to call is 549-7667. The bricks make a great Valentine's Day gift and if you buy it this month, your brick will have a heart on it. That's, That's an hard. original idea. <laughs> they still have to raise $12 million. That's How much a have lot. they raised so far, Marilyn? 12, 12 to 14 million. We need another 12 million. Bricks for trauma, folks. Great Valentine's Day gifts. Good idea. Thanks, Marilyn. You're welcome. Esta noche, Angel de Trauma del Hospital Jackson Memoria. Así, Guillermo, funciona bajo muchísima presión, no solamente porque allí se trata de salvar vidas todos los días, uh -huh. sino también porque la gente que trabaja allí, los médicos, lo están haciendo en medio de una gravísima crisis económica. La mayoría de la gente cree que solo los pobres y los criminales resultan víctimas de accidentes de trauma, que hacen algo que la mayor parte de la población no hace para poner sus vidas en peligro. Pero esta no es la realidad. El trauma no discrimina. Pero a pesar de lo frecuente de estos accidentes traumáticos, el mini sistema de trauma se encuentra en crisis. Su estado es tan crítico como sus pacientes. Dusky is a rescue. Son casi las 11. Miami vive una noche más. Sobre ella el equipo de rescate aéreo del metro tiene 8 minutos para socorrer a una mujer baleada posiblemente durante una disputa doméstica. El centro de trauma se prepara para recibirla. Nosotros tenemos ahora más vida salvada por el sistema que tenemos ahora en el condado que en cualquier tiempo que, que tenemos el, el sistema de trauma. Sin embargo, las dificultades ponen en peligro este vital servicio. Problema número uno, 
Los hospitales Jackson Memorial y el de niños de Miami son los dos únicos centros médicos que proveen tratamiento de trauma desde Orlando hasta los callos de la Florida. Nosotros no, cerra no cerramos las puertas. Cuando vienen acá con traumatismos mayores, los estamos esperando, no los hacemos esperar. Según las últimas estadísticas, Jackson ha admitido a 1.420 víctimas de trauma en lo que va del año. 24% de ellas llegaron aquí a causa de accidentes de tránsito, 27 por herida de bala. El trauma es una enfermedad que ataca a todo el mundo. No tiene que ver con color, con religión, con edad. Como a nadie se le niega ese ser. Antes queden vacíos. Hace dos o tres días tuvimos que pedir prestado de otro hospital. Llamamos al centro del Líbano, nos prestaron... Eh, ciertos equipos que necesitábamos para pacientes, las cuelleras que no teníamos, se nos habían acabado. Y tenemos muchos problemas, pero seguimos adelante, tratamos de ser inventivos, eh, inventamos cosas. Y los resultados son brillantes. El índice de mortalidad de un paciente de trauma ha descendido. De 21% al 7%. O sea que estamos salvando vidas red de hospitales privados que atendían a pacientes de trauma. Y mañana a las 6 de la tarde, Guillermo, los llevaremos dentro de una sala de trauma y conoceremos al equipo de trauma que trabaja 24 horas sin parar. Muy bien, muy interesante. Gracias, Angie. Lo que no han dicho hasta ahora es que hay un trato que se ha, eh, se ha remolcado en la carretera y que no saben cuántos heridos hay ni qué es lo que nos van a traer. Minutos después, el helicóptero aterriza en la azotea del hospital. El herido pasa por un ascensor, sigue por un interminable pasillo y llega finalmente a uno de los dos salones de trauma. Tiene en estos momentos una herida intracerebral y en eso es lo que nos estamos preocupando ahora. Luego de eso, el paciente es estabilizado y trasladado a otra unidad. Para los... Uno a uno los pacientes son trasladados al centro de trauma. En el pequeño y lento ascensor solo caben dos camillas. Stay, stay still, okay? I told you. Pero como de costumbre complica, llega este hombre atropellado cuando conducía su bicicleta. Eh, hey, señor, ¿cómo está? ¿Cómo se llama? La zona asistida sin una habitación. El ciclista gravemente herido es atendido por el personal más experimentado. Ay, 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 Tranquilo, abre los ojos, abre los ojos. El joven tiene fractura. Ok. Te hago dos y tú te care of that. ¿Que ¿Usted parece alguna enfermedad, señor? Bueno, no. ¿No parece ninguna enfermedad? Ok. ¿Cuántas veces le dispararon? Para edificar una unidad independiente de trauma justo al lado del hospital Jackson. Trauma es como comprarse un seguro de vida, ¿no? A veces, bueno, voy a necesitar esto, no lo voy a necesitar. Tú no sabes cuándo te va a pasar, si te va a pasar. Pero para los que ya han pasado por el centro de trauma, es la diferencia entre la vida y la muerte. Ellos me salvaron, ellos y Dios me salvaron la vida. Y fui muy, muy afortunada de poder llegar allá, que me pudieron atender como me atendieron. Y tener el chance de poder vivir. Hace tres años, Julissa y Luz se fracturó el cráneo, la pelvis, las clavículas, las costillas, durante un accidente automovilístico. Como decimos nosotros, volvió a nacer, pero... Yo no pensé que la doctora viva otra vez y en estas condiciones que está, que gracias al Jackson, al trauma. Y hay más ejemplos. El doctor José Castillo, víctima de un asalto en 1988. En el lado derecho de, del cuello me, me dispararon eh, con el cañón que era con un silenciador pegado al cuello. Yo creo que las probabilidades eh, de haber muerto hubieran sido el 90%. Eh, de no haber tenido una asistencia tan activa y tan eficaz. El centro de traumas del hospital Jackson, a pesar de sus dificultades prácticas, está ofreciendo un servicio vital para nuestra comunidad. Las estadísticas demuestran que hay que mantenerlo funcionando para que aquí se sigan convirtiendo tragedias en milagros. Angie Sandoval, Noticias 23. Abasto. Las más de las veces debe atender a sus pacientes en los pasillos del hospital y su sala de emergencia es la más ocupada del país.
Nosotros tenemos un promedio de 350 pacientes uh, mensualmente en casos de trauma y esto afecta el resto de la operación en el hospital. Gozo, como gratificación. Los casos de traumatismo son atendidos en el Jackson Memorial. De estos, el 45% son a causa de accidentes de auto, el 40% por violencia física. Esta paciente que estuvo al borde de la muerte hace cuatro años fue salvada en el Jackson. Tuve eh, trauma en la cabeza, se me rompió el cráneo, la pelvis en tres lugares las clavículas, costilla, colapso pulmonar y estaba entre la vida y la muerte y me llevaron para Jackson Memorial Trauma Center. Pues si no fuera por ello, yo no estuviera aquí hoy. Ante la situación de emergencia y en momentos en que el hospital ha iniciado la construcción de un pabellón que será su centro de trauma, la Comisión de Metro, junto con varias ciudades del Condado de Aid, han declarado esta la semana de la alerta del trauma, en la misma en que se recolectarán fondos para dicho centro. Estamos buscando la ayuda también de las municipalidades locales, la, las ciudades y otras agencias de gobierno como son el Estado y el gobierno federal para que lo ayude en la construcción de este centro. El sábado, domingo y lunes todos los bomberos y, y los policías van a estar en la esquina colectando dinero para ayudar a, para hacer el edificio. Pero la campaña emprendida no termina esta semana, ya que el Hospital Jackson Memorial debe lograr obtener un total de 26 millones de dólares para terminar con el centro de trauma. Su construcción se espera que esté lista para mediados del próximo año. Ana Luisa Herrera, Noticentro 51. El FBI y el servicio... Por ser un entrante ilegal, el arresto... El, arresto se... el objeto de esta es recaudar fondos para seguir adelante con la construcción del nuevo e imprescindible centro de trauma del hospital Jackson Memorial. Y como nos dice María Montoya, durante estos días, bomberos y policías estarán en las esquinas. Centro de trauma salva vidas como la de Yulisa, que en 1987 quedó casi destrozada por un accidente automovilístico. Su hermano se hizo bombero motivado por la atención que ella recibió. El único chance que puede decir que tiene es ir a Jackson y yo veo todos los días se ve que hay un caso como el de Julissa que se puedan salvar. Ellos son los mejores a lo que ellos hacen y si no fueran por ellos estuviera aquí hoy. A un costo de 26 millones de dólares el nuevo centro de trauma ya se encuentra en construcción. Se espera que sea terminado en abril de 1992 y entonces cuadruplicará la capacidad de admisión del centro actual. María Montoya, Noticias 23. Y hasta el momento solo opera en dos salones de ese hospital. Según los oficiales del mismo, para poder brindar un servicio más eficaz y lograr salvar más vidas, es necesario que estos puedan contar con su propia facilidad médica. Es por esta razón que varios voluntarios estarán llevando a cabo una colecta este fin de semana con el fin de lograr esta meta. Martín Teriano nos informa. Simplemente con mirar a Julie Eguilus, uno jamás podría adivinar que ella un día estuvo al borde de la muerte. Hace tres años y medio, Julie sufrió un aparatoso accidente automovilístico, el cual le causó fracturas en el cerebro, la pelvis, las costillas y estuvo a punto de perder una pierna. Julie y el equipo del Centro de Trauma del Hospital Jackson Memorial lucharon por su vida y triunfaron. Me siento orgullosa, eh, muy, con mucha suerte de poder haber tenido el Trauma Center para salvarme a mí mi vida. Y una vida es tan importante que yo creo que cualquier vida que ellos puedan salvar es, es algo muy grande y algo para celebrar. Julie es una de más de 4.000 pacientes que trata el centro de trauma de Dade año tras año. Y es más, se especula que hay un 50% de probabilidad de que un día su vida podría estar en las manos de un experto del centro de trauma. Antes de su accidente, Julie nunca se dio cuenta cuán valiosos los servicios del centro de trauma serían. Hoy ella está tan agradecida que quiere ayudar a construir una nueva facilidad para el mismo. Julie y su hermano Carlos, quien trabaja para el cuerpo de bomberos de Coral Gables, están prestando su ayuda voluntaria para colectar dinero a favor de esta causa. Según Carlos, para él no existe forma de pagar al centro de trauma lo que hizo por su hermana. Lo único que él puede hacer, dice, es ofrecer su tiempo y su buena voluntad. Tú siempre piensas, bueno, como a mí nunca me va a pasar nada, no me va a hacer falta, pero a lo mejor va a hacer falta algún día y es mejor tenerlo ahí asegurado por si pasa. En Coral Gables, Marta Interiano, Noticiero Mía Visión. Ya. Yep. Finalmente, el sábado, el domingo y el lunes estarán recogiendo donaciones en las siguientes localidades. 
el Trauma Street Drive de Bear Road University Drive. En Bear Road y en Leyun Road, también en Leyun y la carretera US1, y en Leyun Road y Old Calder Road, así como en Leyun y la 8 calle del Southwest. Y ya para traernos el estado del... Just by looking at Julie Aguilus, you would never know she almost died. Three and a half years ago, she was in a serious car accident. She suffered severe head trauma, fractured her pelvis, ribs, and collarbone, and nearly lost a leg. Julie and the trauma center team at Jackson Memorial Hospital fought for her life and won. If it wasn't for the trauma center there for me, I wouldn't have made it. Okay. So I needed the trauma center, and it was there for me, and I hope it's there for everybody else when I... Julie is only one among the 4,000 patients the trauma center at Jackson Memorial Hospital treats every year. In fact, there's a 50% chance that your life will be in the hands of a trauma expert someday. Before her accident, Julie never realized how important South Florida's only trauma center would be to her. Now she's so grateful to the facility, she wants to help build a new trauma center. She and her brother Carlos, a Coral Gables firefighter, are volunteering their time to collect money for this and, cause. Uh, you also may know that we're collecting in the Grove Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, the only way that I could uh, think of repaying them and so that's a good way maybe getting the word out to people that, that it could that, be, uh, you know, God forbid it could be somebody uh, in your family, your daughter, your your son or your brother or sister. And that's what I'm trying to let the people know that it's better to be sure that the trauma center is going to be there for you just in case you might need it someday.